Uh, we'll be going to chapter 9, beginning at verse 8. First, we give thanks to God for all that he's done. His goodness, his mercy, his grace, his kindness, his favor, his everlasting life, his hope, and so many other things. And uh, we thank God for you and those who continue to give to the cause of Christ and the furtherance of the gospel message. And uh, we just are thankful today to be able to lift up the holy name uh, as we embark on our lesson today. Uh, we'll begin with scripture and prayer. Scripture will be by Brother Jim King and prayer by Maria Dwyer. So many prayers, requests, prayers that are needed. Um, and so, um, yeah, if you have a prayer request, please uh, email us or, you know, call us or uh, put it on the side of the Facebook live stream now. And we love to pray for and with you. Um, continue to pray for the unity of this country of people uh, that uh, we continue to learn to love each other more and uh, love the things that God loves, hate the things that God hates. And so uh, as we begin now, uh, we continue to pray for our church, our staff, so many other things. Uh, so uh, praise God today. Uh, we give him thanks Still praying for Benin and Africa, and we will have a new uh, country uh, next week. But it's next to Togo and down through that area. So continue to pray for that, that Christ, the gospel message goes through, and that Christ is glorified in those places. So let's start with scripture and prayer. We'll go from there. We'll be reading from Proverbs 3, 1 through 8. My son, forget not my law, but let thy heart keep my commandments. The length of day and long life and peace uh, shall thou add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them around the neck, write them upon the tablets of thy heart. So shall thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all, with all thy heart, and lean not on unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thy own eyes. Fear the Lord, and depart from evil. It shall be health to the neighbor and marrow to the born. And blessed be to the reading we hear the Proverbs 1 to 8. Gracious and Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord. Thank you for another day, another day to rejoice and be glad in, another day to just worship your holy name and come together and share your mm -hmm. word, Lord. We just, we thank you for every opportunity we have to do that and that we are still able to do that amidst all of the things going on in the world. We ask forgiveness of our sins, those that we know of and those that we don't, and we thank you for your grace and your mercy. And Lord, we have so many prayer requests tonight that even if I am not able to get to all of them, Lord, the ones that Pastor mentioned and those ones that we don't know of, the ones that we do, and Lord, you just, you know all of our needs, you know all yeah. of our wants, you know our trials and tribulations, and Lord, we just ask for your comfort and peace now. Lord, I lift uh, Adelaida and Rafael Robledo up to you, Lord. They are the parents of Mario Robledo. Adelaida, his mother is fighting for her life right now. She's been stricken with COVID and his father, Rafael, is also extremely ill. And Lord, we just ask that you send that family healing in every way possible and give peace to their troubled spirits, Lord, and just guard them from fear and doubt and wrap your hedge of protection and light around them and their families, their friends, all of the caretakers, and that they're not stricken as well, but that they're able to take care of them and, and just comfort that family, Lord. We continue to lift Joanne up to you, which is a family friend of the McWatts um, and their daughter's father-in-law um, who is having heart problems. 
sister Harriet and her brother Johnny, her family in, in Los Angeles and in uh, back east, Lord, I'm, I'm forgetting the, the city right this second. Sister Edna Davis, who is a friend of Sister Teresa Newsom, Lord, who is still recovering from a stroke. And we just ask the, uh, for strength for her and her family and for healing. Tina Biggs in Ohio, who is still trying to recover from the loss of her home from a fire and taking care of her four children. Sister Teresa Newsom, her sons, her entire family, Lord. Sister Margaret Michaels, as she recovers from her illnesses. Deacon Duncan and that whole family at the loss of his sister, Lord. Our ministers, our staff, our pastor, his family. Edwina Ho's son, Ben, Lord, and whatever he is, is grappling with right now. All of the essential workers and Lord, there are just so many prayers out there in need. And we just ask that you bring comfort and peace as, as we go into this new season of change and a new year and a new opportunity each day that you give us to just be better in you. And Lord, we just thank you. And we ask you to blanket us in your peace. And as always, keep love at the forefront of our minds and let that be the guiding light and all we set out to do. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen and thank God. Amen. Amen. Um, as we look into this <clears throat> passage of scripture, uh, Isaiah chapter 9, beginning at verse 8, where We'll see that they will not repent. And that's why I put up their persistent, persistent, persistent impenitence. In other words, if you don't repent, brings repeated chastisement. So uh, if you keep going down the wrong way, God's not going to stop. He's not going to just say, okay, I'm done. Uh, you're, you're okay, you can, that's as far as I'm going to go. No, until you, if you're his child, until you uh, get to where you are supposed to be, which is First Peter, verse 5 and 6, and I'll put it here on the board, so we have it, uh, let me put it right here. First Peter, chapter five, verse six. And it tells us to humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. And uh, let me go there and get the precise what it says. First Peter. Oh, the second. First Peter. Yeah. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. So that's what we have to do. That's what they should have done, should have been, should have humbled themselves under the mighty hand of God. But they chose not to. So let's look in here and see uh, what it says. Verse 8 The Lord sent a word. Okay, so let's look first that it was God. Uh, God's word. God sent the word. Don't miss that. It's God's word. Not the prophet. The prophet is supposed to be the mouthpiece for God. It's God's word. God sent a word. And that's his mercy. That he sent a word. Uh, to them, unto Jacob, 
and hath lighted upon Israel. In other words, uh, on the descendants of Jacob, a message against Israel. So, uh, and the northern kingdom, Israel, right? We put that in there. So that's who it's against. That's who this is talking about. Uh, and all the people shall know. Uh, and even Ephraim and the inhabitants of Samaria, all the people, uh, all the uh, uh, people shall know. So again, it's just telling you who uh, Ephraim and the inhabitants of Samaria. Um, so they should know. Now, let's get into that. Uh, they say pride and stoutness of heart. So pride one thing, this is unreasonable. Or inordinate. Self-esteem. So pride is unreasonable or inordinate self-esteem. In other words, it's all about me. Uh, and and I'm, I'm afraid our churches and even our prayers have gotten to be all about me. Lord me, Lord my, Lord I, Lord, uh, could you, uh, Lord, would you for me, for, you know. And if that's the level of your prayers, you're missing the fullness of God's prayer. Those are selfish prayers. We're to pray for one another. We're to pray for God's kingdom to come. We're, support, we're to pray for direction and instruction so that we can do God's will. Well, we pray for those things that we want to be comfortable. We want to feel like we're successful and all those other things. So, the other thing they use in there is the word stoutness or arrogance. That's what that's called, arrogance, which is uh, twisted greatness. It's a twisted sense of greatness. That's what arrogance is. Um, the uh, you know always about how great I am how much I do <laughs> you don't do nothing you, you can't do nothing without Christ That's right. without Christ I can do nothing then Philippians let us know that we can do all things through Christ who strengthened us and so it's a twisted sense of greatness uh Man, that's stoutness, huh? We must be great. We must be doing okay. And so, and then the heart, what he talks about, is that inner man. And it consists of the mind. The uh, will. The uh, intellect and even the spirit, um, but that's our spirit. That's a small s. And so the heart is the inner man, the mind, the will, the intellect, and the spirit. Uh, and so uh, here's what he's saying in there. He's letting us know that they say in the pride and stoutness of their heart. 
This is what they're going to say. This is what they're going to uh, uh, try to, you know, say to themselves. Now uh, we get into. I'm going to erase this top part. I hope you got it because uh, we're going to be working this board today. I'll just go here. So if you don't have the rest, you can get it as we go, but make sure if you want to take notes. That. Okay. So we got to the point to where they say, don't forget that, in verse uh, nine, they say, in the pride and stoutness of heart, uh, these are the things they say. Now, what are they saying? Verse 10, the bricks are falling down, but we will hew stones. Now, bricks uh, are ordinary materials. Building materials. They're common. They're common materials. But they said, they said, if the bricks, the ordinary material, uh, fall down, we will hewn stones, which is uh, a more, a more expensive, more uh, sturdy building material. In other words, what they were saying is that even though the bricks fall down, we're going to come back and build stone, right? We're going to come back and build it bigger and better than ever. That's what they say in their pride and arrogance of their heart. Um, also, the sycamores are cut down. But we'll change them into cedar. Okay, so here we go again. Sycamores. Uh... Uh, wood is a uh, common, common material. So that's a common material. Uh, the cedar is scarce. So it's a scarce material. Um, and precious uh, imported. So they said, in their arrogance of heart, in their uh, pride, uh, if the sycamores be cut down, we gonna order import some scarce and precious cedar. That's what we gonna do. <laughs> now, what this is talking about? This is called um, Defiance. D -D -F -I -A. A. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Close. I knew it'd be some teacher somewhere oh, yeah. in my head anyway. There you go. 
This is defiance. So they are defying God. That's what the that's what pride and haughtiness will make you do. That unreasonable, inordinate self-esteem, twisted greatness. Uh, uh, now your mind, your will, your intellect, your spirit, all that's lined up with defiance. You're going to defy God. Uh, and so uh, they said in there, uh, we've suffered moderate damage in verse 10, but we'll make then, we will more than make up for it. All of our losses were replaced with something better. So that's what they're saying. And uh, let me see here. Let's see here. Oh, they get this. Let's see so that. Have to look at Amos. Uh, what was I at? Amos. Oh. Amos chapter 5, verse 11. So Amos chapter 5, verse 11. Here's what it says. Let me, let me start at verse 10 so you get an idea. They hate him that rebuketh in the gate, and they abhor him that speaketh uprightly. For as much, therefore, as your treading is upon the poor, and ye take from, their, from him burdens of wheat, and ye build houses hewn of stone, ye shall not dwell in them. You have planted pleasant vineyard, you shall not drink wine, the one, no, you shall not drink wine of them. Then he goes on to say, I, for I know your manifold transgressions and your mighty sins. They afflict the just. They take, take a bribe. They turn aside the poor in the gate from right. Therefore, the prudent shall keep silent in, the, in that time, for it is an evil time. And so, but what he's saying there is that look at how their hearts are turned to evil. And so the people shall feel the punishment of their sins. So let's look at uh, uh, 1 Kings chapter 17. Did I say second? It says second. Do you want okay, to sorry. 2 Kings. I'm reading stuff into it. 2 Kings. You're right. Chapter 17, verse 5 and 6. And this is showing us uh, what happened because of one of the things, defiance. Then the king of Assyria came upon up throughout all the land and went up to Samaria and besieged it three years. And the ninth year of Hosea, the king of Assyria, took Samaria and carried Israel away into Assyria and placed them in Hala and Habor by the river of Gozan and in the cities of Nim. And so this is their punishment that they had received. And we know that they've already received it because um, uh, because again, this is Second Chronicles. This is after all the captivities. This is post 
uh, Assyrian post um, uh, the, the captivity of Judah, captivity of Israel. And so, but this is what led up to it. This is what led up to it. Verse 11, therefore, the Lord will set up the adversaries of reason against him and join enemies together. There it is. And so he lets them know that um, because the Israel has put great trust and confidence in this prince with whom they had their alliance. They had an alliance with this guy. He was, they was paying him off. So he knew they were weak. Uh, and this is, so they, they, they didn't abate their pride. They thought they were so big and so great now with this alliance that they, their pride, their arrogance, their haughtiness that was expressed before, uh, that now, um, um, because they had these enemies for the cause uh, for this cause, the Lord hath made strong the haters of Israel, driving them uh, on to make war against him. And so it said the Lord set it up. God set this up. Why? Because people are being defiant against him. That defiant. God moved in. He set it. He set it up that way, and so uh, that's one of the things that we look at. And it uh, let's also continue to look. Uh, at verse twelve: the Syrians before, the Philistines behind, and they shall devour Israel up uh, uh, with open mouth. <laughs> in other words greedily right so I hope you have this I'm going to erase it I'll erase this part so now what does God do what does God do it says in there that he uh, devoured them with open mouth. So that open mouth means greedily. And presently, so greedily and presently, uh, in other words, you make them like a morsel with that open mouth, just, just nothing, just to, to devour them with gaping jaws. Why? Uh, it says, for all this, his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out. Now, uh, for all of this, it says that his hand is continued. So this hand of God, the hand of God, and we'll call it the chastising hand of God. chastising hand of God uh, continued to be stretched out uh, to inflict Uh, 
uh, to inflict them. So the chastising hand of God continued to be stretched out. Um, but uh, still, that's what it says, for his anger, God's anger brought chastisement. His anger brought those things. The anger of the Lord. Uh, see, God gets angry, but he don't sin. Amen. The Bible tells us in Ephesians, be ye angry, yet sin not. Because we have a, a, a tendency to want to sin when we get angry. <laughs> That's the first thing to come. You think of all the bad things, wrong things, or this, or that, that you want to do. Uh, you get self will and all of that. And forget about uh, how much Christ paid for you, the price he paid for you on Calvary. And so we want to do that. But it's still. Uh, so it says, is not turned away. He's not going to turn away his anger. Once his anger gets moving, the only thing that can stop his anger is repentance. That's the only thing. The only thing that will stop God. Uh, but what was their attitude? Their attitude was still arrogant. Uh, they were still uh, trying to do things their way. Uh, and it starts out, how does it start? Let, let, let's keep going because this gets, this gets good. It's real good. For the people turneth not unto him that smited them, neither do they seek the Lord of hosts. So they did not turn to God. That was what it said. They, they didn't repent. They didn't repent. So the Almighty, God Almighty, punished them. Why? They did not. Why? Repenting means turn to God and turn away from your sins. Mm -hmm. So they did not turn to God, which means they did not repent. That's what it says in there. For the people turneth not unto him, God chastised them, and they didn't turn to him. Probably start crying, woe is me, why me, Lord? Or the other side to it is that this wasn't the first people that came in and tried to, that, that, had, that, that had afflicted them. God was showing them. That's why I said his hand, uh, the, uh, and, uh, but his hand stretched out still. Mm -hmm. So in other words, his hand had already stretched out. It had already been attacked. It had already been, had to make treaties. And so it stretched out more now because they didn't repent. But they thought that, you know, well, everything is cool right now. So, hey, must be God must be okay with us. But nobody repented. And that's what you have to be careful of when you're, uh, uh, when you're God's shot. Uh, they didn't turn back to him who struck them. Didn't even seek guidance from the Lord of hosts. That's what he said. They didn't turn to him, neither did they seek guidance. I mean, come on. If God is chastising you, the thing you want to do is repent and seek guidance. God, what's going on? 
God, forgive me. What am I doing? Where are you at? How come I'm going through this? Now, maybe, and God will guide you. He'll let you know. He'll let you know if it's you, which usually it is, for a lot of reasons. Now, I'm not saying it might not be because you sin. It might be because you're doing God's will, and God is now, you've got you in the fire, going through the flood, going through trials and tribulations. Why? Not for your, uh, uh, to harm you, but to make you stronger in him. You need to know that. If you're seeking his God, he'll let you know. But if you're sinning, he's going to let you know too. Uh, remember the uh, seventh chapter of Joshua. Let's look at that real quick. I'll put it right here. Joshua Classic, classic, classic scripture. They had just conquered Jericho. Oh my goodness. Joshua fought the battle of Jericho and the wall came tumbling down. Yes, they did. <laughs> now, uh, now they're faced with another adversary. Um, uh, a it says in verse 2, um, well, let's start in verse 1 because it, it talks about some things in verse 1. But the children of Israel committed a trespass in the accursed thing for Achan, the son of Camry, the son of Zebdi, the son of Zarah, of the tribe of Judah, took of the accursed thing and the anger of the Lord. Here it is, a kindle against the children of Israel. So, uh, they, he did something that God told them what to do. Let me tell you this. First fruits always belong to the Lord. That's where we get first fruits from. Jerusalem, I mean Jericho, he told them, don't take nothing. That's for me. <laughs> That's for me. God gets the first. That was the first city they entered when they went into the promised land was Jericho, the first city they conquered. And God said, don't take nothing. I mean nothing. Achan decided he wanted to take some. But they didn't know. So Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which was beside beth on the east side of Bethel, and spake unto them, saying, go up and view the country. And the men went up and viewed Ai. And they returned to Joshua and said to him, eh, let not all the people go up, but let about two or uh, three thousand men go up and smite Ai and make not all the people uh, to labor tither, for they are but uh, a few. In other words, yeah, we got this one, right? We got this one. Don't worry about it. We don't need to send everybody. Just send a couple people. They ain't that many. God just did that great thing in Jericho. Man, we on a roll now. So they went up there, uh, hither of the people, about 3,000 men, and they fled before the men of Ai. Look at that. <laughs> hey, came back running, running. <laughs> and the men of Ai smote them about 30 and 6 <laughs> men. For they chased him from before the gate, even to uh, Chibarim, and smote them in the going down. Wherefore, the hearts of the people melted and became like water. In other words, they were afraid now. <laughs> when your heart starts melting, you know, you, you ain't, you ain't, <laughs> you scared. You know, you're trembling. So this little small band whooped them up. But why? Because they somebody, somebody, one person, and I'm telling you, you have to watch who you have around you. One person mm -hmm. can cause a lot of frustration. Amen. Hallelujah. And so now, sixth verse, Joshua, now, look at what Joshua does. He what he should have did in the first place, 
he's doing now. And Joshua rent his clothes and fell to the earth upon his face before the ark of the Lord until the evening time, the elders of Israel and put dust upon their heads. And Joshua said, Alas, O Lord God, wherefore thou hast thou at all brought his people over Jordan to deliver us into the hands of the Amorites and to destroy us? Would to God we had been uh, content and dwelt on the other side of Jordan? O Lord, what shall I say? When Israel turneth their backs before their enemies, for the Canaanites and the inhabitants of all the land shall hear of it, and shall environ around us and cut off our name from the earth. And what will they, thou do unto thy great name? So he started asking God, God, you have brought us over here to, to call us to be beat up. And then once we do, everybody going to hear about it. They're going to surround us. They're going to eliminate us. And then what's going, what that's going to say about you, God? <laughs> that's a lot of people. Well, you know, when you mention Jesus today, well, who, the, who is this Jesus? Well, how, you know, who is Jesus? You know, wow. You know, well, that's it. You're going through all these things in your life. Uh, what does that say about your God? That says that you have a mighty God in spite of what you're going through. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Get up, where before, wherefore lies upon dust upon thy face. Israel has sinned. They also have trespassed, trespassed, my, trespassed my covenant, which I commanded them, for they have taken the accursed thing and I have, and have stolen and disassembled. Also, and they have put it even among their own stuff. See, I like that part because then we try to hide our sin under our stuff, <laughs> <laughs> under the stuff of darkness. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, you hide it under your stuff, all that mess. Therefore, the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies but turn their backs before their enemies because they were accursed. Neither will I be with you anymore except you destroy the accursed thing from among you. And so uh, now God is saying, you need to find out what happened because I'm not going to be with you until you correct what you've done. Uh, and so up, sanctify the people and say, sanctify yourselves against tomorrow. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, there is a cursed thing in the midst of thee, O Israel. Thou cannot stand before thine enemies till they take away the cursed thing. So the next morning, uh, therefore, ye shall be brought according to your tribe, and it shall be uh, that the tribe which the Lord taketh shall come according to the families thereof, and the family which the Lord taketh shall come to the household, and the household which the Lord taketh shall come to come uh, man by man. And it shall be that he that hath taken the cursed thing shall be burnt with fire, he, all that he hath, because he hath transgressed the covenant of the Lord, and because he hath wrought folly in Israel. You see that? One person. He didn't say the whole tribe. He didn't say all the tribes. He said, you're going to bring all the tribes. Then we're going to, I'm going to show you a tribe. And then from that tribe, I'm going to show you a family. And then from that family, I'm going to show you a, 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 a people. And that's what he said in there. Uh, uh, families. And from the families, he should show you a household. And from the household, which he shall take, shall come man by man okay so joshua did all this stuff he he did these things and uh so it got to the point to where he brought the family of judah and he took the family of zerites and he brought the family of zerites man by man and zebdi was taken and he brought the house hold man by man and achan the son of camry the son of zebdi Zerah, uh, 
uh, the tribe of Judah was taken. And Joshua said unto him, Achan, my son, I pray the glory to the Lord God of Israel to make concession unto him. And tell me now what thou hast done. Hide it not from me. And Achan answered Joshua and said, I indeed have sinned against the Lord God of Israel, and thus, uh, and thus I have done. And I saw among the spoils uh, a goodly Babylonian garment, 200 shekels of silver, a wedge of gold, 30 and 50 shekels weight, and I coveted them and took them, and behold, they are hid in the earth in the midst of my tent in the silver uh, under it. So Joshua sent the messenger. And uh, so uh, now in verse 24, and Joshua and all Israel took him with him, took Achan with Zerah and the silver and the garment, the wedge and the gold and his sons and his daughters and his oxen and his asses and his sheep and his tent and all that he had and brought them to the valley of Acre. And Joshua said, why hast thou troubled us? The Lord shall trouble thee and this day. And Israel stoned him with stones and burned them with fire. And they had uh, stoned them with stone. And they raised over him a great heap of stone to this day. And the Lord turned from uh, the fierceness of his anger. Wherefore the name that was um, that the place is called the Valley of Acorn to this day. So, again, this sin that, you know, if you don't seek God's guidance, how are you going to know how to take care of the sin in us? Um, and so they did not only just uh, 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 they didn't just uh, Uh, what was I at in verse 1? 12. Yeah, 13. For the people turneth not to him and smited him, neither did they seek the Lord of hosts. 14, Isaiah 9. Mm -hmm. Therefore the Lord will cut off from Israel head and tail, branch and rush, one in one day. So now here's part of the judgment. Uh, he's talking about the uh, high places, men in high places, civil magistrates, judges, governors, elders of the people, and the king as supreme and the subordinate officers, great and small, strong and weak, fathers and children, high and low, rich and poor. That's what he's saying in there. Therefore, the Lord will cut off from Israel the head and the tail. Branch and bush in one day. Verse 15, the ancient and honorable. He is the head. So the elders uh, and prominent men are the head. And the prophet that teacheth lies, he's the tail. Now, and then we'll come back to that because I want to talk a little bit about that before we go. For the leaders of his people cause them to err and they are led of their own. They are led of them are destroyed and they that are led of them are destroyed. So uh, anytime, now look at what happened. Uh, When you depart from God, from his service on the part of the church, the nation, the family, or an individual, so they departed from God, then comes divine correction. So, let me get rid of this, we'll go through this, finish out very quickly 
for today. So, first thing. Part from God. Then, whether it's, you know, and you have to, because he said the priests were preachers, were, were, were prophets, were liars. Is that right? The prophet that teaches lies. Mm -hmm. In other words, the preachers are lying. So, so the, uh, the church or the, uh, We'll call it the church of that day. It's not the church, but church is all on God. And I tell you right now, when the church gets off on God, you're in trouble. Oh, yeah. Family, then divine correction. So then there's divine correction. Um, you know, it could be a form of rebuke or, you know, maybe maybe your pastor might tell you something that you don't like to hear. Maybe a family or friend. It could become sickness, bereavement, um, um, you know, all kinds of things. Then resentment. Uh -oh. That's revolting. That's an L after that. Oh. Against God. So now, uh, so our human will, we resent, we have resentment, we revolt against God. And, and become self-willed instead of hearkening and heeding to the repentance and everything else, determined to act in a spirit of defiance in his own strength. It will rise above his presence. I'll, I'll fix it. I can do it myself. Um, uh, I'll make good my position. I'll I'll brave these perils. I'll just go through them. I'll endure these extreme hardships, uh, the great losses. I'll turn its fallen bricks into massive stone that will not fall. That's what he's saying. I'll do uh, exchange. So, so these are departure from God, divine correctment, resentment. And that's when all that arrogance and everything else comes into play. That's when you begin to be self-willed and, and do your own thing. And uh, so instead of allowing uh, the, the guilt of sin to uh, um, to cause you to seek the Lord, you begin to resent God because of what you do. You don't even know. A lot of times we say we don't even know. I'm not saying all the time you, you don't know, but sometimes you don't know. You don't have a clue because God is holy, completely holy. So we don't know all the time when we sin. That's why we have to seek his guidance. That's why we have to, okay, God, uh, uh, before you get, you know, when you depart, that's the first part right there. Don't do that. Mm -hmm. Don't mm -hmm. do this part. Don't do this part. And don't follow nobody who's doing that part. And I'm going to tell you right now, I've had people talk to me and say, well, Rev, you know, this, 
is not correct, necessarily correct. You're teaching a certain theology. I'm teaching biblical theology. We're going through it line by line. That's all I'm doing. And I'm, we're talking about what it's saying and what it means and how we apply it to our life today. That's all. I'm not trying to put any type of theological bent on it. I've been to seminaries of different, different theological covenant and dispensationalists and all these other ones. And, 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 you know, they try to make a big deal of it, but it's not a real big deal. And I know they, they and it causes for division. So I'm not looking to cause for division. And if you happen to have uh, uh, some type of information that you think is, uh, uh, you know, I don't mind. If, if, I, if I'm wrong on this thing, then let me know. And I'll admit it. But I'm going line by line. And if you can't see the things that's in there for what it is, I mean, I got the Greek, I got the Hebrew. Uh, we can look it up and find out, you know. I don't, I don't have a problem with that. But I do know this. When you depart from God, the pastor, <laughs> let me put this on. Let me put this on here. When you are all on God, you are off on everything else. That's called a coffee is. <laughs> Those of us who know, when Pastor Coffee was here, he said, when you're off on God, you're off on everything else. So I'm going to give Miss Duke, you know. I could have took and said, you know, it came from me and all that. <laughs> it's okay. But, you know, that's true. When you depart from God, you off on God. You think your life is going to be, like, straight? It might be good. It might, you might have things happening. But, you know, let me tell you this. People think they're successful, and they think they don't have to do God's will. They think they're successful apart from God. Well, I got all this stuff, and I'm able to succeed. Da, 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 da. But the problem is, there is a worldly success, and then there's a success God's way. Mm -hmm. And if they're successful God's way, then you're on the right way. And God's way don't equate with the world's way. And so you could uh, be convinced that the world makes you think you successful, but you off on God. And then what you gonna do when, when the storm comes? What you gonna do when the ground starts shaking? What you gonna do when the foul's house starts falling down because you done built it on shaky ground? Mm -hmm. yeah. Where are you gonna go? You're gonna have to turn to God one way or the other. At some time or another in your life, you're gonna have to turn to God. You might as well turn to him now and save yourself a lot of heartache and trouble. Keep God first in your life. Do not depart from God. And again, if there's a church that's off on God, depart from that church and stay with God. And if you think that we're off on God, hey, go find somebody who is, who you don't think is off on God. I mean, I've heard people tell me all kinds of things, and it's okay. I hear it. But I don't, you know, I just say, okay, you got to make the decision for yourself. I'm not going to make it for you. You really do. So our time is up, but this is where they're at. This defiance. Their defiance against God. And we saw why the arrogance, the pride, their heart had been turned. And now and God stretched his hand out further. And again, we saw how Assyria came in and conquered them. Uh, after all that time and everything else. So we will stop right there. And what was that verse? 16. 16. All right. So we will start back at verse 17 next week. And we'll close with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you tonight for showing us so much. God, you continue to reveal to us your words, your will, and your way. 
And oh God, how we thank you for another day's journey. We pray for our country today. And we ask, oh God, that you continue to bless, make ways out of no way. Continue to have people's hearts turn back to you or just turn to you. Forgive us our sins and allow your Holy Spirit to have free reign in our hearts and lives. Lord, continue to help us, give us insight to be able to teach your word line by line, scripture by scripture, and let it just speak to us as you, uh, Lord, would have it speak to us, knowing uh, as we go through scripture, filling context for us that we might be able to understand it better. Lord, uh, and we give you all the praise and honor and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. God bless you and God keep you as our prayer. Uh, thank God for another day's journey. <laughs>